stripping it down to the bare minimum. That's something that blew my mind actually. EasyJet still doesn't really have pilots, flight attendants, mechanics and ground staff. Just one aircraft completely failed to survive. They're not responsible. EasyJet was founded in 1995 with the idea of making air travel in Europe more affordable. And to achieve that goal, they had to innovate in a very complex industry. Today, EasyJet is extremely cheap, sometimes ridiculously so that one can wonder, do they even make any money at all? And not only is the answer yes, but they also have better profit margins than most big companies like Lufthansa or Air France. Also, EasyJet is yet more cost efficient than American low-cost airlines such as Southwest. So how is this possible? Let's answer that and see how EasyJet disrupted the airline industry. Big airlines make most of their profits thanks to their business travelers, meaning that the economy class is not very interesting to them. On average, business travelers make up only about 12% of airline passengers, but account for 75% of the profits. So originally, EasyJet decided to go a different route. They targeted leisure travelers on a budget, but they redesigned the whole experience for them, stripping it down to the bare minimum. The logic behind that was simple. In Europe, flight times between most capitals and big cities are very short, and there are a lot of them. So it doesn't make sense to pay a lot of money for a few hours in the air at most. And most people will agree to trade comfort for cheaper prices. So that's when EasyJet decided to lower costs where possible and only keep what was necessary. Basically, they unbundled airline tickets. When you buy one, you only get the seat and a small cabin bag, and that's all. Everything else comes on top, like the main luggage, an additional cabin bag, uh, food and beverages, uh, the possibility of choosing your seat and some other things. This was a revenue model innovation and this approach can be called no frills air travel, just the bare minimum. And of course the cabin itself is very basic, seats don't recline and space is decreased. Then they standardized everything on the operations side. First of all, their fleets are composed of just one type of aircraft. In the beginning it was the Boeing 737 and in 2002 they made a dramatic change to fully Airbus instead. But now they operate A319, A320, A320neo and A321neo, which are all closely related. It means that pilots, flight attendants, mechanics and ground staff only need to be trained once and that is a huge cost saver. It also makes sense in Europe where EasyJet operates. They don't need a long range aircraft because everything is so close. And sometimes they open routes to the other side of the Mediterranean as well, but it still remains short haul. They don't want to compete on transcontinental flights because that would completely destandardize their operations. Also, when talking about their staff, uh, they are very versatile and can take on multiple roles. Flight attendants can be checking passports at the boarding one day and cleaning the cabin on another. This allows EasyJet to have fewer employees than bigger airline companies. Yet another cost saver. Uh, but that's not all. Uh, there are other ways to decrease costs. For example, EasyJet tries to land at cheaper airports, uh, which can sometimes be not ideal, like with worse infrastructure or simply further from the city center. But again, that's a trade-off most travelers agree on. Or they avoid using jet corridors and rather transport travelers to planes by bus. They also maximize the usage of their planes with an average time between flights of 30 to 45 minutes, very short turnarounds, meaning that planes operate non-stop, all day, and to avoid any problems related to flight disruption and ticket refunds, they simply don't sell connection flights. So they're not responsible. So EasyJet is definitely a champion of standardization and cost efficiency. And you can find many more examples of practical strategies like this in my bestseller business model innovation course, which is perfect for entrepreneurs and big corporations alike. You can find the link to it in the description of this video. And more than 40,000 people have already enrolled in it to learn how to improve their businesses. So I hope to see you inside. Despite their success of focusing on budget travelers, 
Now they also want to profit from the business demand and they are putting strategies in place for that. FlexiFare allows for a change of flight time and route after the booking, which can be useful when a business meeting ends earlier or lasts longer, for example. Fares are also inclusive, meaning that unlike for other passengers, all the services are bundled together. Luggage, seat selection, speedy boarding, security fast track, food vouchers, etc. Interestingly though, EasyJet still doesn't really have a business class like bigger airlines. Their offer to business travelers is still a no frills one, just the bare minimum for this target group. It means that inside the cabin itself, the only difference is a bit more leg and seat space but nothing comparable to the luxurious business classes that most people imagine. This also makes sense as even for business travelers, there's no point in getting in-flight entertainment and better food if you don't have time to enjoy any of it. So once again, EasyJet is very clever in its focus on specific target groups interested in short-haul flights. They respond to their customer needs with perfectly tailored solutions, not uselessly excessive ones and neither unacceptable ones. EasyJet is not alone in this category, of course. There are other companies like Ryanair. Uh, they are very similar, with Ryanair sometimes going yet a bit further. For example, Ryanair's flight to Paris actually lands in Beauvais, which is located 100 kilometers away from actual Paris, meaning one hour and a half additional bus ride. Also, Ryanair's CEO is famous for trolling. So basically, EasyJet is just like Ryanair, but without all the controversies. However, European low fare airlines are generally more cost efficient than their American counterparts, and many new low budget airlines completely failed where EasyJet and Ryanair succeeded. Uh, the reason for this is economies of scale and maybe European geography as well, with the proximity of dozens of historic cities and capitals. At this point, EasyJet has hundreds of planes and serves hundreds of destinations. Their network is huge and they can optimize their flights according to data analysis. So EasyJet is definitely an innovative and disruptive company and this is also proven by the Easy Group. That's something that blew my mind actually. I didn't know about this stuff, but here's the thing. EasyJet founder is Stelios Haji Ioannou, and today he is the owner of Easy Group. What do they do? Well, basically everything. Here's a list of all their businesses, either created by them or licensed. I didn't even know that there was an easy hotel in my city or an easy gym in a city nearby. But you can also use Easy Dog Walker or Easy Pizza or Easy Whatnot. It's funny because this list looks like ads for random domain names containing the word easy, but no, these are all real businesses. It seems crazy that they do all this, but the truth is that it just proves their innovation culture. They launch many projects, they innovate on these projects, and they see what sticks. What doesn't is shelved and the profitable ones are expanded. And maybe a few ones will eventually yield outstanding results. That's an innovation culture that all companies should adopt to survive. Once again, if you love learning this stuff, there are dozens more case studies like this in my business model innovation course, so make sure to check it out. And if you enjoyed this video, as usual, do smash the like button and subscribe to my channel. See you soon.